Good evening. It's an international phenomenon, a story that has captivated readers worldwide. For the last four years, this place has existed only in the collective imagination of millions of fans, fascinated by a little boy wizard with a lightning bolt scar. But tonight, the magical and mysterious world of Harry Potter comes to life. Tonight, it's a story that's won the world over. The largest printing of a book ever, the fastest selling. Um, book ever. Whatever Harry Potter. It's changed people's lives and gave this little boy courage when he needed it most. Harry Potter helped me get through some really hard and scary times. And now, it may be the most anticipated movie ever. I think it is clear that we can expect great things from you. Go behind the scenes with the director. Action! If this has turned kids onto reading so much, why ruin it by making a movie? Discover what's behind the magic of Harry Potter. What a kid. Every kid dreams of being able to fly. Join Katie Couric on a journey into a mysterious world. Do you know how to get to platform nine and three quarters? No, I have no idea. Harry Potter does. He's a kind of a shy rat. Get to know Harry's friends with their strange tastes. Well, that could be earwax. Ew! <laughs> then we're off to see the wizard himself. This is the Nimbus 2000, the fastest broom you can buy. An exclusive primetime interview with a boy who would be Harry. What is the best part about being Harry Potter? Plus, footage from the film never before seen on television, premiering tonight on a Katie Couric special, Harry Potter, Behind the Magic. Chapter One, The Journey from Platform Nine and Three Quarters. Sir, excuse me, do you know where Platform Nine and Three Quarters is? Nine and Three Quarters? To the what? Not in three quarters. Excuse me, it might have been the oddest assignment I'd ever been given. Yeah, it's nowhere platform nine and three quarters is. What? I have no idea. No, nine and three quarters? Yeah. There ain't one. Ordinarily, I'd use any excuse to go to England. There ain't one. No. But this was not any ordinary boondoggle. And right from the start, I realized Harry Potter was no ordinary story. Hold on, hold on. Hi, can you hold on for just a second? Thank you. Do you know where platform nine and three quarters is? Frankly, I was as much in the dark as most of no, my no, mates here at London's King's Cross station, Excuse none me, of whom sir. could help me find my train. And that's how I get to the Hogwarts Express? That's right. That's going to Cambridge. All I had to go on was an invitation I'd received from a Professor Magana someone informing me I'd been granted an exclusive, something called a one-day muggle pass to visit someplace called the Hogwarts School of witchcraft and wizardry and meet the famous Harry Potter himself. My producers sent me here and all they told me was to look for a platform numbered nine and three quarters? It seemed anyone Sorry, I don't know. and everyone I asked. Excuse me, you all know how to get to platform nine and three quarters? I thought I was nuts. Uh, no. Until I finally came upon some people who knew exactly what I was talking about. You go to point nine B and then go three quarters in between to point three A and then go straight on A and find it. And they knew just what I had to do to find that elusive platform. Yeah, they should be doing right Sorry, tonight, yeah. Go to number nine and then just jump through a wall. Did she say, jump through a wall? Believe it or not, it was all beginning to make sense. The reason these kids were so in the know is because they'd apparently read at least one, if not all, of the four best-selling books by J.K. Rowling that tell the fantasy-filled story of Harry Potter. Need the Cliff Notes version? I did, too. As all the kids who've read the book know, Harry is an orphan who doesn't exactly have a place of honor in his wretched aunt and uncle's house. Well, Harry lives under the stairs in an old cupboard. But once he turns 11, he makes a startling discovery. And he finds out what he truly is, that he's a wizard. I know, he doesn't look like wizard material, 
those broken eyeglasses, and what up with that scar? Voldemort used his uh, curse on Harry. You'll find out who that is later. But meanwhile, on Harry's 11th birthday, he gets an invitation, a lot like mine, by the way, to attend Hogwarts School to learn some very unconventional lessons. Of course, not just anyone gets to go. Hogwarts is strictly for sorcerers. As for those of us without such magical magnetism? They call normal mortals muggles. It may not be the King's English, words like Hagrid, Hogsmeade, Hufflepuff. To fans, it's a language all their own. And there's no denying the spell these pages have cast on kids and grown-ups alike. The first four Harry Potter novels, in what the author promises will eventually be a total of seven, have sold over 100 million copies. If you're in the business of selling books, clearly Harry and Potter are the magic words. This is a book that is unprecedented in, in publishing history, the largest printing of a book ever, the fastest selling um, book ever. These are, this is really nothing that can be compared to a, a normal success. Den Harry Potter and the phenomenon is worldwide. Ein bestseller. The Potter books are available in 200 countries and translated into 46 languages. One place where Harry is treated like royalty, his hometown of London, where children actually slept outside bookstores overnight when the latest in the series was going on sale. Since Harry Potter's debut in 1997, the publishing world has widely heralded the implausible story of how its author, a single mother once living on welfare, has done the impossible, getting a young generation of net-surfing, PlayStation, mini couch potatoes reintroduced to the lost art of reading. I've read the first one four times and all the rest of them twice. Like I'm reading during recess, and they're like, come and play with us. Like I can't, I'm reading. And now, Harry's gone Hollywood. The witching hour's just five days away, with the full-length feature film, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, set to open on Friday. I've seen the previews, and all the special effects look so great. A recent survey found that nearly two-thirds of all American children have read the books, and almost all of them plan to see the film. The movie studio, Warner Brothers, hopes that means that we'll be laughing all the way to the Gringotts Bank. We can expect great things from you. Any muggle looking for platform nine and three quarters is bound to find out, just as I did, that it doesn't really exist. In fact, it's the wizardry of movie making that ensures Harry Potter makes it safely aboard the Hogwarts Express. Can you tell me where I might find platform nine and three quarters? Think it being funny, do ya? In the film, sure enough, Harry jumps through a wall and he's on his way. As for me, I had to get myself to Hogwarts the Muggle way, by car. London's Leavesden studio has the haunting halls of Hogwarts during nine long months of production. Action, Kevin. When filming began in September of 2000, a cast and crew numbering in the thousands assembled. Turn a bit more. All of whom were British. Whoa! That? All but one. And action! The director, a Yank named Chris Columbus. We met on Leavesden Stage E, the home of Hogwarts Great Hall. You have four kids, mm -hmm. ranging from four to twelve. Mm -hmm. So I guess Harry Potter was a part of your world before you became the director of the movie, right? Well, it uh, was part of I saw the books lying around the house a couple of years ago, and my daughter Eleanor tried to convince me to read Sorcerer's Stone. So she kept n nagging at me, saying, read it, Dad, you've got to read it. So I, I read it, and I realized it was so much more than a children's book. It just was so inspirational and so touching, and it took me back to a place I hadn't been to in years. Set and action. He knew then it could make a great movie, but he wasn't alone. And cut. Dozens of accomplished film directors wanted in on the action, including Steven Spielberg and Ghostbusters director Ivan Reitman. But after what he fondly recalls as an audition for Joe Rowling and producer David Heyman, Columbus got the nod. And why do you think they picked you? I think that they really wanted to know that I would be faithful to, to the material. I was pretty passionate about it. I knew I had to make this movie. Goes up with it, up. A children's work of fiction wouldn't exactly be a stretch for Columbus, whose directorial track record does include the runaway hit, Home Alone. Ah! 
And don't forget that cross-dressing nanny, Mrs. Doubtfire. Still, he says he knew how important it was to be on the same page as Rowling. She said after the meeting, you get the books. And I feel so good about that. Because everyone expected me to turn into Home Alone. And it's, obviously it's not going to be Where Harry would be going, ah! me. Yeah, exactly. And it's not going to be that. Well, at least Harry's not alone. One, two, three, action! Still, it takes a certain breed of film director to work successfully with a set full of 300 child actors, which comes with its own unique set of challenges. For example, labor laws in Britain require that children work no more than nine and a half hours in a day. That might seem like a lot, but the law also requires them to break for 20 minutes every hour. Then take away three hours for tutoring and subtract one more hour for lunch. And you get just four short hours a day for Columbus to make his movie magic. Excellent work, guys. The best thing is to find, uh, mostly try to find kids who haven't had a lot of acting experience, who really are fresh. And as a result, you get an honest performance because they don't, they're not bringing a lot of baggage with them to the set. Push this queen over. Columbus says he knows the responsibility he has not only to his young cast, but to the millions of fans, young and old, who've already formed their own images of what Harry's wizard world should look like. If this has turned kids onto reading so much, why ruin it by making a movie? I mean, then it's like saying that all great novels should never be made into films. I realize that there's, the only thing you can do is be incredibly faithful to the book. Don't, don't mess around with it. Don't uh, combine books one and two. Don't bring in cheerleaders for Hogwarts. Don't make five of the cast members American. Be faithful. Stay true to the integrity of the books. And that, that was what I wanted to do. But some skeptics question whether Hollywood's pursuit of box office bliss is worth the sacrifice of even one child's imagination. One of the most important aspects of children's development is that they be creative, and, and be imaginative. Dr. Diane Levin is a child psychologist and a professor of education at Wheelock College in Boston. Once the movie comes out, it's the children getting the world from somebody else. They have the whole picture. They have the interactions. They have the characters carved in stone. So as that happens, it becomes more now, when they see it, trying to fit into the agenda someone else has created. And it becomes for many children, it will be less creative experience. Not surprisingly, Columbus disagrees. Whoa! And says he hopes his movie will enhance the creative experience for fans, not diminish it. My pony's gone! I just want kids to see the movie, and when they walk out of the theater, say that was just as I imagined it. I honestly think, by the sheer, the sheer fact that we worked with Joe Rowling on this film, we're going to preserve the integrity of the, of the kids' imaginations. I have to believe that, or else I wouldn't have made the film. Luckily, the director's toughest critic, and resident Harry Potter fan, was right there to keep him honest, his 12-year-old daughter, Eleanor. I understand she sort of has been checking out the dailies mm -hmm. to see how, it, how it's going. You know, I'll come home at night and I'll bring a tape of visual effects, or I'll bring a certain little scene, and uh, she'll comment on it. She'll say, Dad, that, that shouldn't be like that. Or, Dad, that's perfect. That's just the way I imagined it. So she's, she's a helpful collaborator. Not that I make huge editing choices based on everything Eleanor says, but she's, <laughs> she's keyed into the books, you know, and it's, it's just a barometer in terms of what other kids will feel. Next weekend, Chris Columbus will likely have a few thousand more critics on which to gauge his success. And you can bet he'll be taking notes. There are those six sequels to think about. Are you nervous about it? I mean, your career is is in some ways on the line here, isn't it? I mean, if, if this bombs, I don't think there are going to be a lot of people knocking at your door saying, please direct this. There's always television. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no. Coming up, the ways in which the story of Harry Potter has literally changed people's lives and given one boy in particular the courage to stand up against a terrifying enemy. Cause it's witchcraft. Plus, my tour of Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry continues. No, that could be earwax. Ew! <laughs> that is so disgusting. Yeah.